Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk to you about taking care of your Russian tortoise. Now there are many articles out there about tortoises, each claiming to be an, to be an expert in whatever species they like the most. <laughs> now I'm not a professional expert, and when I say that, what I mean is I am not a zoologist, I'm not a herpetologist, and I'm not a veterinarian. And those are the only people that I consider as professional expert advice. Uh, but I am an enthusiast and a hobbyist of Russian tortoises, and I am also a breeder. So although it makes me knowledgeable about them, uh, again, I'm not a zoologist, I'm not a herpetologist, and I am not a veterinarian, so I am not what I would consider a professional expert. I don't care how many years you have your tortoise or how long you've had your tortoise, it doesn't matter. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments about that, but you know, that's just how I personally feel about it. Um, these are information that I find are accurate in my own experiences. Now, Russian tortoises, also known as Tostudo horsefieldi, are wonderful little tortoises with big personalities. Ranging in average size from five to eight inches long and weighing about half a pound to two and a half pounds, these are the smallest species of tortoises. They can be kept outdoors or can do relatively well indoors too. Check out all my articles on Russian tortoises under the Happy Tortoise category on my blog, as well as all of my YouTube videos about them on my channel playlist, which is also called the Happy Tortoise. I will provide a link in the description below so that you could read all of the detailed articles that I wrote um, about how to take care of your tortoise. Now, most of the Russian tortoises are wild caught animals and are very stressed by the time they are brought home. It is common for newly purchased tortoises to have various parasites, herpes viruses, upper respiratory infections, and other problems. Make sure to always wash your hands after handling them. In contrast, captive bred babies are usually very hardy and rarely develop problems if their husbandry is good. Russian tortoises do the best in outdoor enclosures. They may stay outside year-round with appropriate hibernating spot and keeping out predators and rodents. Despite the name, they are also found in other countries like northern China, Afghanistan, and other nearby areas. If you have access to a yard, a garden bed can serve as an outdoor enclosure. If not, a bookcase on the floor with the shelves removed can be an inexpensive indoor enclosure enclosure that's also very large. For the most affordable enclosure, a huge plastic storage tote is sufficient. Make sure the tote is not clear though, as being able to see out of this container will lead to stress for the tortoise constantly trying to go beyond. You can get like a 50 gallon container from Walmart for under $20. So that is the enclosure that I recommend you go with if you cannot provide the tortoise with an outside enclosure. Whatever kind of closure you end up with, it is important that the space has shade and sunny areas at opposite ends. If they do not have free range of a yarded area, shade can be provided by plants. Now, I never understood why people use plastic plants. Why not just plant a real plant in the enclosure? I mean, you have dirt, you have soil, you know, like why, like, why, why do people use plastic plants? I, I never understood that. Listen, plants are not expensive. You could you could get a plant for like under under five dollars. They they sell them at Walmart for like a dollar. All right. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is I've seen crazy YouTube videos of people feeding their tortoises mixed salad greens from the grocery store. I guess you can do that, but I don't. I actually don't feed my tortoises at all. They eat on their own, like in the wild. My original Russian tortoise, Oscar, my pet tortoise, he loved dandelions, clovers, and was absolutely crazy about red Russian kale. <laughs> Go figured. It probably reminded him of it probably reminded him of home. My husbandry for Oscar and my current tortoises now have always been to mimic their natural environment and habitats while even as pets. So as a general rule, a male Russian tortoise will not tolerate another male in the same enclosure. It may also harass a female, so many breeders end up only keeping the male with the female for brief periods of time during the breeding season. I do not recommend that you house two Russian tortoise male together since it is likely that the least dominant one will end up injured, flipped on his back in the hot sun, or chronically stressed and susceptible to disease. Unless your tortoise have free range of a large fenced-in outside area, 
Now, females are typically typically tolerant of each other, but some can become bullies and cause and cause the subordinate female to hide a lot and become sick from stress. If you try to keep herds of Russian tortoises, provide plenty of hiding space and lots of plants so that they can easily hide from each other. Um, now, like I said, I have eight Russian tortoises, or I'm not sure if I said that or not, but okay, if you didn't know that, I have eight Russian tortoises, and that's not counting my pet tortoise, Oscar. Um, now, they are all outside tortoises, and they're all in my yard, so if you if you keep them outside, then yes, you could have like a herd of tortoises. You could have eight tortoises if they have... A, a, an enclosure like a yard like a fenced in yard then that is enough space but if you're going to keep them inside I'm sorry but you're not going to have something big enough to keep more than one and I, and I don't recommend you keeping more than one okay a larger enclosure provides more variety in terrain for the tortoise to explore sculpt the landscape so there are plenty of visual barriers that allow the tortoises to stay out of each other's sight if they desire the downside to free range of the yard is you have to be diligent with keeping the gates closed at all time which is how i lost my beloved oscar but i don't want to get into that because it makes me really upset okay Russian tortoises can climb surprisingly well. They can also tunnel beneath even better. If the fence is solid, the tortoise will not try to escape. However, if a tortoise can see through the fence, it will focus on those gaps and struggle to leave. This can result in injury, so I do not recommend wire or chain link fencing without something that is solid blocking the visual. That's my little boy in the background. We're outside. We're actually outside looking at my tortoises. Standing water may lead to the spread of diseases and other parasites. The best way to provide water for tortoises is to be as natural as possible. But in an enclosure, I do not recommend having a water dish. Instead, I recommend soaking your tortoise a few times a week. A weekly early morning sprinkling of the yard will also offer your Russian tortoise an opportunity to drink if they are outside. Remember, tortoises are often up and moving by dawn during the summer months, so you should provide fresh water earlier in the day during the hottest weather. But now if they're in an inside enclosure, I recommend soaking them instead of leaving a standing water dish. I have other videos about that, about soaking and stuff like that, if you want to check it out. A summer burrow provides a retreat from the hottest daytime temperatures. If there is any doubt that there is good drainage in an area during the summer monsoons or the winter rains, you should mark the amount of dirt where your tortoise has naturally burrowed under so that it's easy to locate. When Oscar was ready for Burmation last November, I couldn't locate him for four days until I dug up my garden and found him during a rainstorm. So there is a lot of other uh, information out there, but you know, I don't want to make this video ridiculously long. So that's just some of the information that I'm putting out there. And you know, different tortoise keepers swear by different methods. So it's really, um, I, I mean, I, I'm, I personally feel like with, with tortoises, with breeders, with actually with, with, with any, any animal, any animal breeder, you should just stick with one species. Now, I love Russian tortoises. That's the species that I stick with. But I have people calling me up, asking me if I would take their Hermes tortoise, if I would take their leopard tortoise. You know, they're moving to I don't even know where and they can't take their sulcata anymore. And will I take it in? And I always say no. I always say no because one, first of all, I don't have room for a cicada that's one and two um you you know i don't i don't really know that much about cicadas so that's that's another really popular tortoise in the united states